Hi, I'm Juha from Eli, and today we're going to have a look at how to read logical models. What we have here is an example logical model. Now, logical models are practically meant to act as implementation design, so to speak, for your data engineers or BI specialists. They have more detail and more kind of technical aspects to them than the conceptual models that we uh, have in Eli as well. Now, what we're looking at here is a logical model that is uh, technically uh, a star schema model, which means that there is a central fact, a thing that we're interested in. Uh, this is a payment fact, so there are a bunch of payments that we want to analyze. And then there are dimensions according to which we want to analyze that. We're not going to be going deeply into these facts and dimensions and the star schema method of modeling here, but instead what we're going to be looking at is the components of this model that we are having here on this canvas. Practically, the uh, logical model in LE is made of three parts. We have the entities, these boxes. We have the relationships, which describe how these entities are linked together, which are the lines. And we have the attributes inside these entity boxes, which tell us about the information we have about that entity. As an additional thing to these basic elements, Ellie also has these links to glossary. More on that a little bit later. Now, as we look at the model, uh, we see that we have five different uh, entities here. Um, for example, the dim vendor entity here tells us that there, in this design, there needs to be a table or something like that, an object named dim vendor, which has to be linked with the central fact payment. For this entity, we have the attributes that we want to know about. So we have a vendor ID, vendor name, and vendor category. In addition, we have marked the vendor ID as a PK, which means primary key. This is the identifying fact of that vendor. So we know that each vendor has its vendor ID, and that's how we know which vendor is, is which. On the payment fact side here, we see that the vendor ID is marked as FK, which means foreign key. This means that the vendor ID in the payment fact references the uh, vendor dimension here. So it's a kind of key field for vendors coming from a foreign object, in this case, the DIM vendor here. That's the entities and the attributes. The relationship line here tells us that there's an association between these two, that the uh, vendor ID that is in the fact table is referencing this DIM vendor here. And we have the cross feed notation here telling us about the nature of this relationship. The three prongs here basically mean that for each vendor, we have multiple payments. And the straight line in the other end means that for each payment, there can only be one vendor. The crossfeed notation is the same as that we use in uh, conceptual modeling in LE. And there are some details to it that we're not going to be covering today, like optionality and, and mandatory relationships and so on and so forth. But the basic idea is that it shows you if the relationship is like one to many, many to many, one to one, or so on and so forth. And here we have a one to many relationship. Now, the attributes in these entities can be primary keys, as we've seen, foreign keys, they could be both, or they can be neither. For example, here in the fact payment, we can see that uh, we have two primary keys. A each fact payment is identified with a payment number and payment date time. We have a bunch of foreign keys, which are used to link this fact to the uh, dimensional entities here. And then we have some information about these payments that we might be using for our analysis, amount paid, invoice number, etc., etc. So these are the, the kind of basic building blocks of these entities and how they relate to other entities. The thing that Ellie adds to this whole thing is a link to the glossary. 
So if you remember Ellie's conceptual data models, we have the uh, things like customers, invoices and payments and vendors there, and they belong to the glossary in which all of these are explained. So you have a definition for vendor, you have a definition for a payment, definition for a bank and so on and so forth. The idea here is that even though we are creating this logical model on a uh, level of, of uh, kind of increased technical detail, we can still maintain our understanding of what the data is really about. And here we can see that the fact payment is actually made of two things. We have the payment event in the glossary, the transaction, and we have the purchase invoice. So we have combined some information about both of those into this fact payment table. And this is in fact very common with logical models. We will see that uh, a logical entity could gather data from multiple different sorts of uh, kind of real life things, the entities in the glossary, because we want to have that data somehow smashed together uh, in order to be able to ease more easily analyze it. These are the basic building blocks, blocks here and uh, you could have multiple different shapes of logical models. These could be named like something completely different and everything. The key thing to remember is that as long as you maintain the links to the glossary, you can keep track of what is what and what is this uh, logical entity actually going to be about. So this is how you read logical models in Ellie. Hopefully this helps you with your modeling journey. Check out our other videos for more information on good modeling practices. See you next time.